Kia ora everyone, coming up later in the show, a beautiful story about a mum's love for two autistic boys who happen to be in their 50s. That's later, but first, cadmium. Some of you, particularly townies, may not even have heard of it, but it's in our soil and it seems to be entering our food chain. So what is it? In short, it's a heavy metal that for decades has been in the superphosphates used to make our land so very highly productive. But eventually what's in the land enters our food. Already kidneys from sheep older than 30 months are not eligible for human consumption and must be discarded. So why do so few of us know so little about it? And what's being done to ensure that what's so good for the land doesn't eventually damage us by appearing in foods at levels that breach standards, both here and in our export markets too? These are serious and important questions. But as Fenner Owen found out, this is a pretty quiet heavy metal. The top dressing plain has been part of rural New Zealand for over 60 years. Every year, 2 million tonnes of this stuff, superphosphate, falls from the sky. In the 50s, top dressing was promoted as the way to wealth for the country and the farmers themselves. I'll soon be running twice the number of sheep up here. You know, it's wonderful what top dressing has done for the hill country. But back then, we didn't know what the effects of top dressing would be six decades down the track. Like Australia, we got our superphosphate from Nauru, but of all phosphate sources, the Nauruan fertiliser had the highest content of a highly toxic metal called cadmium. So what is it? Soil scientist Dr Chris Anderson. Cadmium, it, it is an element. It is, we can't create it, we can't destroy it. It's regarded by many people as a heavy metal. And so it's, it's inadvertently got into the soil and now no one wants to mention it because it's so much a part of our economy. It's always the threat of what it will do to our economy. So we're supposed to just put up with it and keep quiet about it. Cadmium is in rechargeable batteries, yellow paint pigment and cigarette smoke. But it wasn't until the 60s we saw its effects in the food chain. In Japanese rice fields downstream from a mine, villagers suffered many fatally with kidney failure and bone softening. That was at extremely high levels, but how concerned should we be about the 30 to 40 tonnes of cadmium still dropped on our land every year, and that there is now a link between cadmium and cancer? Environmental chemist and cadmium expert, Dr Nick Kim. It is a known human carcinogen, so it can cause cancer or contribute to cancers. So um, because ca some cancers come about as a result of estrogen, uh, getting out of whack. Um, cadmium has been implicated as poss possible causative agent in breast cancer and testicular cancer. So how might we be exposed to cadmium? Now there's five times more of it in our environment than there was 60 years ago. The highest level of cadmium is in traditional daring areas like the Waikato, Taranaki and the Bay of Plenty. It bypasses milk where it's at safe, barely detectable levels, but it's taken up by animals and accumulates, as it does with humans, in the liver and kidneys. The levels of cadmium in New Zealand animal organs was found to be too high for our trading partners. And that caused a response and that's when we started to see re trade sanctions put in place I and mean, we had different international markets going hang on these this offal was contaminated we're concerned about it we're not going to we're not going to import it so now only liver and kidney from sheep and cattle younger than two and a half years is exported and sold to us here soon we'll tell you what happens to the tons of offal with the cadmium that doesn't make the grade in New Zealand, the group with the highest level of cadmium in their systems, apart from smokers, are vegetarians. And that's because the cadmium is soaked up from the soil into leafy greens and into root vegetables like potatoes, carrots, onions and turnips, and also into wheat. Anywhere that's had intensive dairy farming and horticulture for a long time has got high levels of it. It's about you know accumulation over time so the, the places that have the high levels are where most of our food's grown. It's the best the best land in New Zealand and it's and so that's that's the worry. 
So how do we know that the vegetables we're eating have safe levels of cadmium? Short answer, we don't. Is well, there that, rigorous routine the th testing? <laughs> that's the thing, no one's, no one's testing. Dr Kim applauds the government's five yearly total diet survey, but is it enough for consumers who want to know if the vegetables we're eating on a daily basis are safe? So, say so for, for vegetables, for most vegetables, the standard is 0.1 milligrams per kilogram of cadmium is allowed in, say, a lettuce or a potato or an onion. So we never exceed those? Uh, there's good evidence that we do exceed those in some foods some of the time. For instance, in wheat and in potatoes, Dr Kim reckons on any given night, 30,000 New Zealanders will be eating potatoes over the tolerable cadmium level. But he doesn't want to single out potatoes, there just isn't sufficient research on other vegetables. In the food safety area, we have a very nice list of standards for cadmium, lead, arsenic and other, other contaminants in food, but very little monitoring goes on uh, to determine whether those standards are being exceeded. So do you understand why some of these growers actually don't get their crops regularly tested? Yeah, yeah, I guess it's one of those things that you just don't want to know. You'd prefer not to know. But it's also people just have no idea. I mean, I've, I've yet to speak to a farmer who's aware that there is an issue with cadmium and superphosphate. And so why do you the think problem. they're not aware of that problem? Well, because no one's telling them. Farmer Jackie Hahn agrees with that. She's the third generation to farm this King Country property. Just people don't know. Why do you think they don't know? <laughs> I wouldn't have a clue, but you know, we just haven't been told to test or anything, and it's an extra cost. So if we're told there's no problem, then why would you test if you think there's no problem? She knows about cadmium because she's just finished an environmental science degree and wanting to eliminate the possibility her land could become contaminated, she got this sample paddock tested. You had this tested, how much did it come up with? 0.88 milligrams per kilogram. Was that higher than you thought? Yes, a lot higher than I thought it would be. So what was your response when you, when, when you saw that number there? I was a bit shocked, to <laughs> say the least. Jackie reckons the soil will be up around the contamination level of one milligram per kilogram of soil within 10 years. Even now, if she grew vegetables on it, they would probably exceed the tolerable level. But who would know if she sold them locally? As a consumer of, of food for, you know, that's grown in New Zealand, then, then I would like to have a lot more confidence that I'm not consuming you know, cadmium in, in, in my food. And, and it, you know, it's the same with pet food. Ah, pet food, back to the higher cadmium organs which can't be sold. The meat industry has confirmed to us that they're used for things like blood and bone and pet food. There is potential for effects on pets from that, yeah, and uh, again I don't think anyone's done any, any work on that, just as uh, there have been, uh, has been no sort of New Zealand uh, work on the environmental impacts. Two years ago, the government formally confronted the cadmium problem and drew up a national cadmium strategy. It's headed at the Primary Industries Ministry by Dr Gerard Riss. At this stage, we don't believe it is a concern in terms of the, the soil levels, but it is a long-term issue. So we have to um, keep an eye on it, and that's the reason that, the, uh, that we've put in place a cadmium management strategy, which has got all the key sector people involved in it, including the fertiliser industry. No environmentalists though? No environmentalists um, as well, um, but I think the key people that can influence the impact of cadmium on the soil are around the table. To their credit, fertiliser companies have voluntarily dropped their cadmium levels. Dr Kim reckons the level needs to be four times as low to make a difference, and it should be set in legislation. Well, let's introduce a standard that sets maximum levels for heavy metals in fertilisers. Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> Could be done. Is this kind of an experiment? Jackie's growing turnips on her higher cadmium paddocks, not for consumption, to try and soak up the cadmium. Although some farms in the neighbouring Waikato have already reached the cadmium threshold, Jackie urges farmers to confront it. But if you don't know what your level is, you don't know where you are. So. Just get on to it, guys. But for many farmers, there's just too much to lose in confronting cadmium on their properties. Apart from the expense of testing, there's a the loss of potential markets, organic certification, and the big one, which is looming, how high cadmium 
is going to affect our land values. That'll be the land that's contaminated. It's about food security. It's about our future, you know, our children's future, growing food off the land. Then on with a really important story shot by Billy Wepu and edited by Marcel Feister. Coming up, surely someone in Christchurch can help this mother find a short-term home for her 50-year-old autistic sons. What sort of a place are you looking for? A three, just a three-bedroom house that's clean and warm. And it's got a chair. As we've seen before on this program, landlords in Christchurch can, be afford, can afford to be picky after the earthquakes. With demand for rental houses at an all-time high, many landlords are overlooking tenants with dogs, cats, and it seems people with disabilities. Malcolm and Nigel Adams are in their 50s, but they have the middle age of toddlers. So she's done all their lives. Their wonderful mum, Alison, has gone into bat for her boys to find them a home. Jindy Harper has their story. There's no reason not to rent to them. They'll probably be better tenants than a lot that are out there now looking for rentals. So it's just people don't understand. They're inclined to be a bit scared of them. Yes, even when they were diagnosed back when they were three and four, um, we found parents didn't want their children to play with them, that sort of thing. I mean, it's followed us all our lives. Alison Adams is the mother of Malcolm, aged 53, and Nigel, 